Ow. Okay, guys, for today's video, I thought I would go over the differences of coolant or antifreeze and what you kind of need to know about them and all everything. They'll kind of set you straight for any future endeavors involving your coolant system you may want to use or you may want to do. First of all, is it antifreeze or is it coolant? Yes, it is in fact both, but the reason it is what it is may be different to what you're thinking. First and foremost, there is nothing in these, I'm talking about the standard water-based type of deal, uh, other than the water that actually, in fact, does the cooling of the vehicle, okay? These are a mix of uh, ethyl glycol and diethyl glycol and water plus some inhibitors and a bitterant in that because people drink this shit apparently. Um, in these coolants, the thing that cools it down is in fact the actual water itself. Uh, the water runs through the radiator. It gets heated up in the engine. Higher temperature comes in through the top of the radiator. Runs down across several uh, little tubes that go from one side of the radiator to the other. Or if it's a same side radiator, it goes back to one side or down one side, back and loops back around. And on either side of those tubes, you have the veins. And what the, is, the deal is, you have the dammer of the tube. The more surface area of the tube you have, either in one a giant one or a bunch of smaller ones that add up to be a higher diameter, uh, that allows more surface area for air to come across. Now, on the outside of those tubes, you also have all those wavy veins that go up and down the entire length of the radiator. What those do is those also increase the surface area of the air passing over them. So they kind of touch up to the tubes inside this part where it's touching the tube heats up and as that heat it heats up the heat expands and travels out and it spreads the heat from one centralized location out and as the air comes in this way it is starting to exchange that heat from there to the ambient air and be pushed through and pull that heat out with it and that is what actually drops the temperature of the coolant as a as it goes through there it's the same similar thing as your HVAC unit or heat pump on your house, except uh, those have refrigerant that go through it. But in order to drop that refrigerant temperature down to heat up your house, it exchanges the heat from outside. Even when it's like 110 degrees outside, if you have your AC unit running on your house, if you go out there and put your hand over top of the fan blowing up, you'll feel that it is substantially hotter of the air coming through out that's being exchanged through the actual outdoor unit than it is ambient temperature outside. So the water itself is what does the cooling. You could, depending on where you are, and this is the way it was to begin with, run pure straight water through your cooling system and it will heat exchange itself perfectly fine and not overheat. Now, it is antifreeze because added to that water is the alcohol, the ethanol glycol or the diethyl glycol. What that does is the alcohol lowers the freezing point of the water, okay? So if you have just straight water in your car, water freezes at uh, one bar of pressure, which is at sea level, it's 14.7 PSI, freezes at 32 degrees Fahrenheit. And for all you people that don't use freedom units, that's zero degrees Celsius, okay? What the glycol does when it's added and mixed into the coolant lowers that freezing point, okay? So, depending on how much alcohol is in the coolant is depends on at what freezing point it will be. And we'll get to that in a little bit, a little later on. But we need to understand kind of the physics of how water and all that stuff works. So, if water freezes at 32 degrees, water freezing is dependent on two, two different things. Temperature and pressure, okay? At a higher pressure, the water freezing point and boiling point is raised up. At a lower pressure, is dropped down, okay? So, just for instance, water boils at was it 212 degrees, 
uh, 100 degrees, uh, that's Fahrenheit, 100 degrees Celsius at sea level at one bar pressure. If you were to take water up to top of Mount Everest, it boils at about 165 uh, degrees Fahrenheit. So why that is happening is because as you go higher in altitude, the pressure of the air is diminishing. So as, as opposed to having this much weight pushing down on the water, fighting it to expand to turn into a uh, vapor, you have this much weight putting down on it. So it's much easier to expand. And once the uh, water starts to expand and turn to <clears throat> steam and vapor, uh, the rest of the water reacts much faster. So that's, that's why if you're ever going to boil water, what you want to do is you want to start with cold water and boil it and heat that up as opposed to starting with already hot water and heat that up because the temperature disparity between the cold water and the boiling water is much greater, which means a, a much greater transfer of energy so it will actually boil faster than uh starting with already hot water that's you know only 40 degrees away from boiling or something like that okay so keep that in mind so uh the type and mixture of antifreeze or coolant you need actually is not just straight up kind of like 50 50 as you may want to think that's totally dependent on climate where you live temperature wise elevation all that stuff and what the, yeah, climate, like what the temperature goes down to. So let me show you this. Here we have on the right, this is now all vehicle uh, coolant. It is yellow. Uh, here we have on the left, Dexcool coolant, which from about 95, 97 onward to now, uh, that's what all GM vehicles are using. And someone's going to say, oh, no, it's not that bad. Because someone wants to argue about everything. That's cool is shit. Uh, once they switch to that, cooling components have started to uh, die much faster than they ever used to be. Okay, so let me show you. Here on the back. So you have about 95 or so is when they started switching for GM vehicles and stayed that way. Chrysler kind of started switching around 2013, Ford around 2011 apparently supposedly to this and now Ford uses the all vehicle stuff apparently. So uh, this is trash. I don't recommend it. If your car already comes with Dexcool, you can go ahead and reuse it as you want. Uh, or you can switch, use the all vehicle stuff or switch over or completely flush your system and switch over. Um, sorry, I just recorded on my phone. I got a phone call coming in and just completely distracted me. So now let me show you this. So this one here is already ready to use. Do not add water. It's a 50, 60, 50, 60, 50, 50, 50, Jesus Christ, pre-diluted mix. You just shake it up, okay? This bottle here is, where are we? Concentrate, okay? You must add water to it. So, hang on a second. Let me answer this phone call. Okay, I'm back. My train of thought was lost. So let's go back over. Okay, so that is ready to use. This is concentrate. Okay, all that is, is that is they took out half of the concentrate in there, filled it up with water. Now I looked just to check. Uh, the price is currently for this at O'Reilly's. This uh, concentrate is $17.99 currently. The Ready to use premix stuff of this exact same one here is $14.99 for a gallon. And you're probably thinking, oh, well, that's a better deal. Actually, it's not. Okay. So, like I said, when you get a pre, pre used one or a pre mixed, di pre diluted one, Jesus Christ, uh, it's only half coolant, the other half is water. You dump it in, you get one gallon of it. Okay. For the price of $17.99 for one of these, and then you go to the store. Uh, grocery store and you get one gallon of distilled water distilled that is extremely important okay that's a buck you add that to here now you have two gallons for $18.99 okay so for about 95% cheaper you get two gallons ready to go than it would cost you to get two pre-mixed gallons okay and then you just dump out half add half a gallon of water to each of them shake them up and you're ready to go now I, I said distilled water 
you need to use distilled water in your vehicles, okay? So what distilled water is, is you just take water, you boil it. The water turns to vapor and steam, steam rises, it is captured and is taken and it leaves all the impurities, the minerals and all that stuff behind that is then uh, filtered out and not in the water and it is just pure H2O in distilled water. Most people don't know it, but water itself is inert, okay? Water does not rust, water does not conduct electricity. What does cause rust and what does cause electricity is the impurities that are inside of the water if it is not distilled. Distilled water won't do any of that, okay? So that's why you need to make sure that you add distilled water to the coolant and to your car. If you use regular tap water, regular water from a hose, whatever, I mean, if you're in an emergency situation and you have to do it, you got to do what you got to do. Fill up your car so you can get to where you're going. But if you want it to actually last, you use distilled water so that will stop any rust forming inside the cooling system, pitting all that stuff. If you do use normal water at all, you need to run a flush, that flush kit that you mix through here, run it, cycle through, do that several times and flush it out with distilled water. Hopefully get everything out and then you can go back adding in the, the other stuff you need to add into. So now, uh, where was I going? Okay, for concentrate stuff, back to the boiling point and temperature, all that stuff. Uh, back when cars were first made, they had unpressurized systems, cooling systems, which means uh, there was no pressure cap. The water boiled when the water boiled. So, like I said earlier, with uh, removing pressure makes water boil. At a lower temp uh, temperature, increasing pressure makes it boil at a higher temperature. So that is why if you look at your radiator caps or anything down here, you'll have a PSI limit because these are all pressurized systems now. So which allows for the, to run higher temperatures and you have higher temperatures and more combustion, all that stuff and blah, 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 blah. Okay. So this has a, the Z has a 16 pound cap on it. Uh, that's roughly kind of what it is. And that is in case it, it, keeps a 16 pound bit of pressure maximum inside the system. If the if pressure exceeds that, the cap will pop and it'll let the excess boil over to make sure it doesn't kind of pop something else in the engine and right then shut it off, let the car cool down. Now, let me show you this, okay? So we'll look right here. Since this is, since that is already the ready to use, that is 50-50, that, that's pretty much good to go wherever you are. But now, if you want to base your stuff on your climate situation, if we look right here at this, so I have the freeze protection of 12, negative 12, negative 34, negative 62. Oh, and the boil over protection right here. Okay, 260, 265, 270. So right here, if we look at the dilution mixtures of coolant per, per water ratio, you'll see what it is. So if you live in a place like Florida to where only a couple days of the year you have iguanas freezing and falling out of the tree and landing on your head, you can get away with a 40% to 40% coolant to 60% Water, you can actually even get away, if you're down in Miami or something, a 30% uh, coolant to 70% water. And that, I think that probably put it, me just guessing, okay, right around zero degrees Fahrenheit, okay, of the freezing point. If you're someplace like up in Canada or whatever, you may want something more like a 60-40, which would give you a 62, a negative 62 degree freezing point. And then you can see the boil over, but if you're up that high, you have to worry about that stuff. And this here, the boil over protection, also here, is if you look here, it's based on a 15 pound pressure cap, okay? So that is what the temperature of the coolant will get up to before it starts boiling inside the car with 15 pounds of pressure in the system. So these are two different types of coolants that you would need. You can, if your car has dex cool in it, uh, drain it all out, run a flush several times with distilled water and get all that out and switch over to something new uh, like this yellow coolant. I should also say this, going way back, before yellow coolant arrived, uh, had arisen, arose, came back like Jesus, uh, and before Dex Cool, all coolant was green, okay? I don't know exactly what the mixture of it alcohol-wise was, was in it, but back then, if you had green coolant and you tried to add it to Dex Cool, it would congeal and clog up your system. You can't do that. This stuff is made for all vehicles, so the yellow can be added to Dexcool, uh, and you can go about your life. I would recommend, though, either doing all yellow or sticking it all Dexcool, 
just to kind of uh, go with it. Now, with all that being said, there is other w completely waterless coolants out there, like Evans waterless coolants. Waterless coolants. It's expensive as shit. It's like uh, 60 bucks a gallon. But as it says, it is water free. The benefits of that they claim is lower corrosion, but again, it doesn't corrode without the minerals in it. Uh, lower electrolysis, which electrolysis is something you have to worry about if you have a car with uh, a kind of not 100% efficient grounding uh, and an aluminum radiator. The electrolysis will actually cause the, the aluminum to eat itself up the, through the coolant. Uh, you can get past that by taking a welding in an anode uh, stem in top of your coolant to, or top of the radiator to kind of pull any of the excess electrons out of the system to keep the tr electrolysis from causing the, the uh, situation when the, the aluminum eats itself. But yeah, you can get that. Uh, it's Evans, I think. There may be other, other companies that do it, but I know of the Evans. Evan stuff and you can do that and not have any water it'll work in uh everything it has higher boiling point because it's all pure or, or whatever their proprietary mix of alcohols in it uh so higher boiling point lower freezing point and uh that is it i believe i got distracted by the phone call so my brain kind of went all over the place but uh so anyways my recommendations, get concentrates and a bit, a gallon or two of however much you need of actual distilled water from a grocery store. Roll with that. You save yourself money. If you just want to have a sealed up container ready to go in your vehicle in case you need it, go ahead and get the pre-mix 50-50 stuff. Uh, if, you're, if you're buying the pre-mix stuff just to do like a flush or something, whatever, you're wasting your money. You're throwing away about, you know, 50% of the money or 95% of the money you could be saving uh, if you just go ahead and get the coolant, the concentrate and whatever, and make sure whatever you do, label it. So I have this mix at 50-50, half a gallon of distilled water, half a gallon of concentrate. As you can see over there, even though that was pre-mixed, I had already emptied out this jug, so I wrote on there it's 50-50. That is also mixed from a concentrate or whatever. So just make sure you label what you have so you know what you're doing. You don't ever want to get the concentrate and just dump the straight concentrate into the engine. It'll fuck your shit up. It won't, it won't cool. It certainly won't freeze, but it won't cool. You overheat pretty badly and uh, get jacked up. But uh, uh, yeah, hopefully that should clear up any questions you may have about coolant and what you may need to do. Um, if you think I left anything out because I, I kind of got distracted or you have anything to add, uh, you can go ahead and put in the comments. Don't bother coming by saying, oh, Dex Cool's great. It's best stuff ever. No, it's not shit. It's just shit. It's what kills all your all your uh, cooling components and stuff in, in your cars. And it has been since this introduction. Okay? It's trash. Uh, but yeah, any other comment, by all means, start a discussion. Uh, all right, guys. That's all I got for you today. So like, comment, subscribe, and all that stuff. And thanks for watching.